Okay, I think it's time for another short video on the missing persons information series. I think this will be number four. And this one's probably going to be about two issues. The first quick one's about 48 hours. Anyone who's seen the TV program 48 hours would understand that oftentimes when missing persons cases turn out to be unsolved homicides and so on, the first 48 hours in investigating the crime is critical. One of the big problems for missing persons is that quite often police don't want to take a missing persons report from you until the person has been missing for at least 48 hours, in which case uh, if there is something serious has transpired, um, a great opportunity, a great investigative opportunity has been lost by the delay in reporting someone missing who then later on turns out to be an unsolved homicide. So I want people to understand that you can and you should, as long as you're, uh, you've got that feeling that something's certainly wrong if you know someone well enough to know that they don't just up and go missing without there being something seriously wrong, then you should place your missing person's report um, within the first 24 hours if possible. Don't uh, let anyone at the, the counter when they're busy at the police station try to convince you that you can't report someone missing until they've been missing for 48 hours. So um, scotch that, that falsehood and get your uh, missing persons reports in ASAP. Don't wait 48 hours. Uh, moving on from that, because that's a pretty quick, short and obvious one, I want to talk about coronial inquests which seems strange on a missing persons report, but for families of long-term missing people, missing persons, um, it's really important that you manage your uh, loved one's missing persons case. Uh, leaving that responsibility to the police is not a good idea. 98% um, of the time, our police are able to clear up missing persons cases within the first day or so. Uh, they, they have a pretty good rate of um, clearance. But the ones that they are unable to solve, that slip through the cracks and become long-term missing persons cases, it's really, really important for the families to take on the responsibility of actually managing <clears throat> their own case. And I've already mentioned social media and so on, social media campaigns at least. Um, but I want to talk about... Um, other subjects as well later on. I'll do another video on managing the media. But coronial inquests, a lot of people don't understand that uh, as the family member of a long-term missing person, you are able to request from the Minister of Police that a coronial inquest be held into your loved one's disappearance. Um, and there are a lot of benefits of asking for a coronial inquest and being granted one. One of those is that police are legally obligated to provide the coroner with all of the evidence that they've gathered in that case. And the beauty of a coronial inquest is that it's a public hearing. So whilst you might have a member of the family who are missing and you're unable to access the actual police file of all of the information that they've had, all of the leads that they've run to the ground, everything that's turned up uh, a dead end, um, you're unable to access that. You, you don't have a right to access police files. But the moment that a coronial inquest is granted, the police by law have to hand over all of that information to the coroner. And a coroner's inquest, being a public hearing, means that all of the information is available to the public, including the members of the family of the long-term missing person. What this means is that you can go into the coroner's office and you can review all of the police missing person's file, which gives you an opportunity to make sure that nothing obvious has been missed or to find out where the ball has been dropped or what obvious lines of investigation haven't been followed for various reasons. So the other thing is, uh, in, in cases that I've been familiar with in the past, it's not unheard of that police occasionally do lose evidence. Um, 
uh, I won't mention the case, but recently a coronial inquest that I lobbied for and that was granted resulted in police having to go through their archival system where they had misfiled crucial vital evidence f from over a decade ago and handed over to the coroner. And in doing so, they discovered vital evidence that was in that missing um, archived files, which subsequently convicted the young girl's murderer. So don't overlook your right as a member of the family of a long-term missing person to ask for a coronial inquest. It is a way of ensuring or being providing oversight and making sure that the police have carried out their due diligence. Uh, police are very reluctant to hand over unsolved cases to the coroner. Uh, they will more often than not review all of the evidence and, and quite likely open the case again if they find anything that has been missed. It's a very, very valuable tool. Uh, don't be shy to use it. Obviously not in the first 48 hours, but if you are the member of a family who have a long-term missing person, five or ten years, and the case is going nowhere, the coroner is your, uh, is your answer. The coroner is your friend. Coroners have what's called coroner's investigators who are detectives employed by the police department but who work for the coroner, not the, not the commissioner of police. So coroner's investigators, coroner's detectives, their job is to find out everything that normal police detectives missed or screwed up or didn't do properly. Um, and they are a special breed, the coroner's investigator. Um, they take their job very, very seriously. They're extremely thorough and they're extremely critical of their, their colleagues' failures to, to do everything humanly possible. So just a, a heads up for you, um, don't overlook your right to seek a coronial inquest for a long-term missing person. That's it for this one. Thanks.